All right, all right, all right. Eric, with the Miller Park Command coming back at you, finally, after what seems like the longest drought of baseball ever, uh, we are finally back starting play. We're throwing strikes, getting likes. Uh, things have changed. Obviously, the dynamic of baseball has changed. There is a lot different this year. Uh, a, lot things, a lot of things that we can't do as a channel, obviously, because of the limitations, the social distancing, everything that's going on. Uh, with that being said, it, today is 4th of July, so I'd like to wish all of my listeners across this great land and watchers, if you're on YouTube, a uh, happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. Uh, it's the first time without baseball on the 4th of July, I think in my lifetime. I don't really know that for certain, but I I read something on Father's Day that was the first, first Father's Day without baseball in like 50, 100 years. I don't remember the exact number, but it's kind of sad. Uh, you know, it was a big day, always with the special jerseys. You know, we just miss that stuff, and it's you don't realize what you miss until it's gone. Not to get poetic here, but uh, lots happening. Obviously, today was the first day uh, the players got on the field and did any kind of workouts, anything like that. Uh, so really good stuff happening. Some good comments coming from the crew. Um, they didn't have any live streams. I, I saw somewhere that McKelvey said they were supposed to, but the equipment they got new equipment. Uh, so I think they're going to be live streaming some of these practices and some of these workouts. Um, Josh Hader and Brandon Woodruff were on the mound today. They both uh, pitched live VPs. Uh, Ryan Braun looks like he hit one out in the live VP. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Just the little things, you know, we're seeing a lot of social media and we're going to have to kind of engage through social media because we can't be there and engage with players. Obviously, that changed just the plans of the channel, the podcast. Um, we're still working on finding guests and things of that nature. There's a lot in the works. It's just a matter of putting it all together, I guess. We did not get video of the last one with Corona Kyle. Corona Kyle will be back in the next week here. Uh, being the fourth, I really just didn't want to interrupt him, you know, let him celebrate with his son and that kind of thing. So, with that being said, I'm going to go into a uh, quote from Bob Euchre, and I'm just going to paraphrase and take the what I feel is the funniest part. Uh, I'm doing what everyone else is doing. That's staying locked up, shut down, wear a mask if I do need one. Uh, I went to the store a couple weeks ago with a catcher's mask on, and they told me it wasn't, it was the wrong one. It helps when you get punched in the face, but that's about it. So Bob Euchre bringing hilarity as he always does to a bad situation. Um, Brent Suter uh, wearing his mask, saying they're all wearing masks to stay safe. I don't necessarily know that I see that because a lot of times you, some of the videos and pictures you see don't have them. But uh, they talked to Ryan Braun today. McKelvey talked to him, and you know he just talked about the difference of baseball. Obviously, for you and I as fans, this is totally different because we don't have the ability to be a part of it, interact with the players. Uh, if you saw the video uh, the other day on the Instagram story, if you haven't checked out my Instagram, go over and check out Miller Park Minute on Instagram. Uh, but there is... No access whatsoever. You can't go by where the players enter. You can't do any of that stuff. So it's just kind of sad because, you know, now sports is different. You know, we're so distanced from the sports and the players, and that's a big part of it. Yeah, you can pay $50 to get cardboard cutout of yourself put into Miller Park to watch games. Personally, I don't care. $50 is a lot of money. Um, a lot of times I don't pay that for a seat when I go to Miller Park. So I think that's kind of ridiculous and frankly stupid. No offense to you if you did pay to have yourself 
put in Miller Park, but not my cup of tea. Uh, so we're just, they're talking about live VPs, Josh Hader, great pictures of Josh Hader. Uh, it looks like McKelvey is distance as well. So I'm assuming the press requirements with some of this stuff are they have to stay at their distance too. I know in Boston, um, they're actually have used, are using the concourses for the BP, um, and separating out the players by using the suites as individual locker rooms for each player. So I don't know if Miller Park is doing any of that. I haven't really seen anything too in depth. Um, as far as I know, the only active, really active at this juncture guy on social media is Logan Morrison. And he's been kind of putting some stuff out. Uh, but he's mostly just drinking coffee at local places in Milwaukee. So, okay. Aiden, please turn that down. Uh, and yeah, again, McKelvey tweeting about live streams. Uh, Head and Court had some comments from Brian Braun. Basically, Ryan Braun says, you know, it's kind of a different world that they're living in right now um, with COVID. And it's just, it's such a difference from where it was. Um, there's a lot more that Ryan Braun had said. Sorry, I had a bookmark that thought. Head and Court. Uh, Head and Court and his dogs. He's got a new book. I didn't know about it. Um, it's a 50 years book. I per purchased the McCalvey book. The McCalvey book is great. Full of illustrations, not a lot of text. Looks like his is a little more. Mm, kind of looks, it almost looks the same. So I don't know if I'll pick that one up, but uh, here we go. Ryan Braun said, I don't think I can properly articulate how much work has gone into this. Obviously, it's unlike anything else that I've experienced. The entire Brewers organization has gone above and beyond uh, anything they expected. The number of tests, the numbers in the, the numbers in the country don't look great, but I'm very encouraged by intake numbers we saw. So basically, uh, if you didn't see that, the okay, oh, cool. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so if you didn't see, uh, basically they had no no positive tests or anything come like that. Uh, they have to go through intake testing when they first get here. Everybody got a test. Now they are clear and uh, everything's looking good. So the Brewers are allowed to play. Um, I think basically how it's going to work is if someone does contract or come into contact with it, they will be quarantined. You'll have to use somebody from your 60-man pool. Uh, right now the Brewers have 45 in their 60-man pool. And then 45 in camp from their 61 player pool. Um, and then they can call somebody up and send people down. Uh, basically what that looks like is it looks like they're, they're going to keep them as reserves in case someone goes down. Which could be scary because if a major player like a Ryan Braun or a Christian Yelich has to go down for two weeks, our shortened season is going to be in detriment. I mean, you think about what happened with Kristen Yelich. Now, that was quite a few weeks that he was down, obviously, towards the end of last season. But if somebody goes down with COVID and we're only playing 60 games, that could really affect things. Even it's true with injury, too. If they go down with any type of injury, it's going to be a very difficult, hard dynamic for them to get through. Um, so we'll kind of see how that plays out as the season goes. I know there are some players that have opted out of playing this season. Uh, I want to say off the top of my head, uh, Ryan Zimmerman. I saw a letter from David Price, who just got traded to the Dodgers. So he's he's out. He's not playing. Um, so there's going to be those people, those people that don't want to play and don't want to expose themselves. I know Mike Trout is highly opposed. Um, Mike Trout makes more per second than I do um in a year so and we have a toddler calling through aiden what are you doing uh so you know just i'm just, wondering down for 
you don't see me? Okay. Well, be good. Okay. You know, it's just obviously everybody's personal preference. I'm not going to say one way or another, you know, should Mike Trout be, be concerned or not? He's, he's got a wife that's pregnant. I get there's concerns. Hey, so there's a lot to do with that and a lot going on. And I don't want to take that away from him or anyone else who wants to play it cautious or play it safe in this whole thing. Um, Brewers are happy to be back together. That was the, the Haddon Court article from the Journal Sentinel. Obviously, to be playing the game you love is something that is huge when you have not done it. I mean, the rest of us working class people are obviously going to work, you know, going back to work. And I think that's, that's huge for us and for the country. Uh, getting back. Aiden, can you please stop? Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, they're calling it summer camp. I, I have a feeling that there's going to be a ton of merch coming out. Okay. And they're going to they're gonna market this thing. They're going to market it. The live streams are going to happen. We're going to see a lot of good stuff coming out. And I, I'm really excited there is baseball in any form because life has been pretty dull. And, you know, to experience a day like today where, you know, I look back on my memories, my Facebook memories, I've gone to Brewers games years past a lot. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's sad because there's a lot of history to baseball. There's a lot of history to this country and baseball. And on a day like today where we're, we're thankful for, you know, the gifts of being in this country and the, the life that we have, you know, we don't get to see our players don their special uniforms and, you know, we're kind of all watching it at a distance and I don't know, personally, personally, I'm just, I'm so frustrated, you know, to, to be at Miller Park the other day to see these pictures of the players at Miller Park is like kind of emotional almost if you, if you think about it, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult to go through a time that, you know, we don't have any of the, the life that we, we used to live. And now we're just, we're just living it. You know what I mean? We're just, we're just in this. Um, here's what David Price said. And I think this is interesting. Dear Dodgers Nation, as considerable thought, and discussions with my family and the Dodgers, I have decided the best interest for my health and the health of my family uh, not to play this season. I will miss my teammates, will miss you cheering throughout the season. I will be cheering throughout the season and into the World Series victory. I am sorry I won't be playing for you this year, but look forward to representing you next year. Stay safe, be well, and kind. Go Dodgers. Love, David Price. So that's a play, a pretty large piece from that trade that has now opted not to play. Um, I think that's an interesting point because, you know, now we're looking at, you know, Mookie Betts was part of that trade. How long are the, the Dodgers going to have Mookie Betts? Are they going to get him the full 60? Is he going to get injured? I mean, there's a lot of unknowns and questions there. A lot of these guys had signed one-year deals. You know, we've, the Brewers have got their slew of them. Um, it looks like due to service time, though, we we lucked out on a few players. Um, I was reading an article the other day that there are some due to service time that that'll actually benefit us. So that's that's really good. Um, if you want to see a video on that or want that article, let me know. I will link that up or give it to you. Or go over on to the Miller Park Minute Facebook page. I think I did share it there. Um, it's just, it's so different right now. And there's so much to be said. And I could go on for days about this. But the other things we're seeing now, though, is we're, we're, we're coming back healthy. Obviously, Corey Knavel, Urias, um, a lot of these players had that additional time. You know, we're, we're almost to the point where we... we we're almost to where the all-star break would be and midway through the season. So, 
you know, your bronze, your, your Urias, your Lindblom had a slight injury. All those guys are, are back and healthy. So hopefully we're firing at full strength. Obviously my prediction, I believe the Brewers are going to win, um, 38 games out of the, uh, 60 game season. So just my thoughts. Uh, I think with the mentality that they went into, and I didn't say this before, maybe, maybe I didn't podcast this or I didn't record this thought, but I didn't see how long haul the strategy of having a slew of infielders would really work just because everybody hits hot streaks at different times and things of that nature. But right now, I think that is to the biggest, and I mean the biggest Brewers benefit, because you have players and utility players, you know, you've got Brock Holt, uh, Logan Morrison, Justin Smoke, newcomers, Evacil Garcia, um, Omar Navarez, Jacob Nottingham, you know, Manny Pena, Ryan Braun, Lorenzo Cain. You've got all these guys and all this talent on this ball club. Um, as far as hitters and, you know, we, we've got some new pitchers and I'm not going to discredit pitching, but I think having all these utility guys and all these, Oh, um, so too. Another guy, Urias, you've got so many different guys and so much different mix. Um, I really, I really look forward to that. I mean, I, I think it'll be interesting to see lineups day to day. And what Craig does with the extra five guys that he has, um, DH, who's going to slot in where? Obviously, you got guys like Holt, uh, Braun, Smoke. Those will all make dynamic, dynamic choices for the uh, DH position. Uh, the runner on rule, I'm I'm going to touch on it. I don't want to, but that's part of the rules. Uh, obviously, the universal DH was one of the things. Ten games against each team in our division, and then I think it's 20 interleague. I think that's right. Don't remember these exacts, but one of the things I'm going to say is these rules are, are kind of heartbreaking in a way because the universal DH, uh, I didn't think needed to happen. Uh, the National League was always the National League. It's fun to watch the pitchers. It's strategy, too. It also changes the strategy of how you use pitchers, you know. You may be able to sneak a pitcher an extra inning, but, oh, wait, no, he bats. So now we got to we gotta pull him out, you know. So the strategy for Craig Council is going to change, which Craig Council is super optimistic. He, he looks raring to go on this thing. Um, if you watch any of the interviews with him, he's he's very, very... Um, cautious, but I think he knows that he's got a good dynamic going into the season. So, but the, the universal DH is just, I'm not a fan. Sorry. Not sorry. Uh, then the runner, I guess, you know, if, if games get super long, yeah. But my question where the, the runner in extra inning games comes in is how is that created for scoring and the dynamic of statistics because does does that runner I mean he's obviously gonna count if they hit him in it's the game winning run but how do you score that and you know that guy wasn't batted onto base by anybody he was placed there so is it still an RBI I think that's kind of weird. I mean, I know that's a very rare scenario that you're going to have this. And we're in a shortened season. So, I mean, it's a blip on the record. But I really don't get how you can do that to your statistics. Because that's still going to screw up. I mean, I don't know how many extra inning games are played every season. But, you know... And how that would skew your numbers, but it just doesn't make sense to me. It's painful. It's hard to think about because there's a lot of detail that goes into those numbers. And 
I don't know. I just feel like the game of baseball itself is kind of like, hey, we're just going to throw these rules in because. Because we want them. And uh, they're forcing them upon us. So. I, I, I'm not going to go into Manfred in this video. I've talked about Manfred a hundred times, but F him. F him. I hate him. He just doesn't get it. He doesn't get the modern consumer that you and I, the people who who talk about and love this game and watch content on YouTube. And I've been consuming content for months now. And it's old content, new content, whatever I can get my hands on. And I don't know. I just, it'll be, it'll be hard pressed to see what, if these rules stick and 2021 is a total question mark at this point. Like, let's just get through these 60 games, um, playoff format, all of it. I, I, I believe the Brewers are, are stacked to do well. I think that we've got a good amount of talent on the field. It's going to be interesting to see, um, DH for Braun, give him another year. Let's sign him up. Uh, Yelich is, is going to come back with fire because Yelich wants to prove for what he missed out on last year. You know, a lot of these guys are on short deals with the Brewers, so I think they're going to come out and come out strong. And like I said, 38 win of the 60 games that we're going to play. That's my prediction. Stamp it, mark it. 38 games. We're going to be in the playoffs. Uh, I think we're going to be number one in the division. I I don't I don't think that uh, anyone will get COVID on the Brewers. Um, I think this thing is going to just kind of go away. Uh, they've made a very good effort to distance the players from us as fans. So, which is really just... Oh God, I can't... I can't say it enough. I'm I'm heartbroken by by not being able to be a part of this. I mean, you know, I look around this room and in my office, and you know, these are great memories that I've had for years and years to come. As I I started a day like today, where I've got so many great memories of July Fourth baseball and and cool jerseys and and caps, you know, like. It's sad. It's very sad to, to, to not be in the state right now and just, just I don't know. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I will probably come back, talk about some more stuff tomorrow. Um, depending on what they show, I, I hope we get to stream some, some players working out and stuff like that. And uh, I'll try and share any links that I do find if I find them on the Miller Park Minute Facebook page. I'm always sharing articles there. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Twitter, I talk baseball. I, I try and be as random and as fun as possible. I don't I don't get too deep and too serious and too angry on Twitter because I don't want to join the Twitter mob. Everybody's so angry on that platform, it's not even funny. But that being said, head on over to YouTube, subscribe, go on over to Anchor Podcasts, um, I don't know if we're on Spotify yet. Uh, check the Anchor podcast. Thank you for watching the Miller Park Minute. Go Brewers!